all those teams will be playing all their gun players in, in all those games but most of them will have to Hull KR have got Wigan then Wakefield then Catalans away then London at home and then Salford away to finish things off and London arguably even though they're in the worst position right now have it in their own hands they've got Castleford away and then Catalans away which are two very tough games but then they've got Leeds at home Hook Hour away and Wakefield away they finish with three of the other teams they play the most of the teams around them where's your money on on who's going down London <laughs> yeah <laughs> notwithstanding the the sort of the fixtures coming up I I just I just don't think they'll have it. I mean they've got the points difference is is not great uh, it's the worst worst in the league and so it, it means that they've got to, with five games to go they've got to rely on if essentially winning two games that at least one of those other sides is is losing and I just don't think they'll have quite enough they have to win their last three without a question yeah. Uh, yeah. in that I think if Leeds can get a win against a what is going to be a depleted Athletic. Catalan side next week, that'll be a home win that sets them up for that home running. If they don't win that yeah. game, then I think that home running will damage them. It'll put a lot of pressure on them. Mm. There'll, be, the, you mm. know, there'll be anxiety in the crowd towards the team on the pitch. But if they do win that game against Catalans, then I think that sets them up for, for a good running, doesn't it? Wakefield, right. I'm very worried about in, from their point of view. I think they've been very poor. Um, they're carrying a lot of injuries. They're not bringing in a high caliber of player uh, to, to bolster the squad. They, they, they don't. That, that's not there now. Kleppi Tangano was a good signing, but the rest, not so sure. Um, and I just think those games against those top, those playoff places size. That means that they're not going to win more than twice, are they? Um, I wouldn't have thought so. Although they, I mean, the first twenty-five minutes against us, they gave us a really good game. But they um, didn't create anything. No, no, that's the problem. And, and Huddersfield, the problem. similarly, have got a very tough run in. I, I can't see yeah. them winning more than twice. So it really, London, if London can win those last three games, they can stay up at the expense of either Huddersfield or Wakefield, yeah. I think. But I, I'm, 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 I'm kind of with you. I think it's, yeah. I think London are going down. Probably a bit too much. Yeah. Probably a bit too much. Okay, stat line of the week. We've both. <laughs> mentioned it it's Jackson Hastings isn't it one try four try assists five tackle balls 202 metres two clean breaks you even talked about his average gain and all of that it, it's the stat line of the week who's your player of the week I'm going still with Sam Tompkins I thought notwithstanding the fact that he got sent off and my general antipathy towards um, uh, to, towards Mr Tompkins I thought he had a blinding game for, for, for Catalan against, War against Warrington in the middle of a maelstrom um, uh, not just with his kicking but his passing was and his general playing the line was very good he looked back to his best I thought I'm going to continue the theme of going with players that generally I don't like but I can't help but <laughs> applaud what they achieved this weekend and I'm going Danny Maguire I just think crucial moment of a crucial game he delivered absolutely so I'm going Danny Maguire for my player of the week highlight of the week I've gone clubs tackle on no Longo. I mean it might be a bit personal <laughs> angle on that but I've got to say not many people have stopped that flying Fijian uh, when he gets into full pace and for a prop forward an hour into a game or so or whatever it was to, to do that I thought was absolutely brilliant and it was a, 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 ma a, a match winning moment so well done Tony Club very good and I'm going for Danny Richardson's step dodge show and go and dart to the line I thought it was a lovely try we had to balance our player of we the weeks out with our we're picking our own sides <laughs> for the highlights of the week didn't we in terms of the predictions I went 6 out of 6 last week it takes me up to 66% wow. Alan only went 3 out of 6 but he still holds the overall lead on 67% Sarah's on 54 and Tim's on 54 um, we'll see how they get on in future weeks in the Super Brew Alan obviously is doing well in the predictions he stays top of that it was Andy Curry who wears the yellow cap this week though um, in the fantasy league Alan Bagley reinforces his top he really wants a, a, an SLP beanie hat towards Alan Bagley he reinforces his top spot with another weekly uh, best performance in the in the table this week and stretched his lead at the top make sure if you enjoyed all those fan reviews and our reactions to them make sure you get your fan views in on next week's games to see how we react to those uh, we're now going to move on to other results which I'm going to say apologies to championship to women's rugby league to league one to NRL fans we're not going to spend tons of time on because 
the news was elsewhere this week but we're going to run through the other results anyway Championship round 23, it started on Friday night where it was a dress rehearsal for the 1895 Cup Final. Sheffield took this one, convincingly 30 points to 10. It was Barrow 16, York 24, uh, Dewsbury 22, Featherston 25 in a very close game there that Fev managed to pull out of the bag. Halifax 22 to lose 30, Halifax were in good position for a lot of this game but the French class one out. Lee 31, Swinton 30. Swinton were ahead of this one in at uh, half time and um, they've discover- discovered a gem on the wing in, uh, is it Matty Ashton? But uh, unfortunately, Lee came back to win that one. Rochdale 26, Batley 50. We already know Rochdale are down. Bradford 20, Toronto 25. This was on TV. We had a few fan views on this one. We did. Uh, Toronto just had enough over a spirited Bradford style, so says POB 1976. Attilia Murphy also says, attempted mugging of Canadian tourists in Bradford, averted by slightly insane Frenchman. Question mark. <laughs> Question mark. Bradford really, really wanted this, but a half-time team talk of quiet menace by Brian McDermott led to an improved performance. Hakim Maloudi not only has great hair, but he's very inventive. Ross Thorne hopefully re-signs with us after this. Good test, no injuries, not a bad result with several first choices rested. And Martin Simpson says the Bulls broke Toronto's line too easily in the first half and we were deservedly in front at half-time. Fast and more direct play from Toronto in the second combination of resting players and teams arguably having their strongest games will hopefully mean Toronto are fitter and sharper this time around Maloudi's best game so far despite some unorthodox ball handling he, he is an unorthodox player en- enjoy him Toronto fans because you might hate him at occasions <laughs> mm, and in the standings the league leaders Toronto are like Saints untouchable and they're on 44 points York in second half 33 Toulouse and Lee have 32. Featherstone make up the playoff spot on 30. Sheffield and Bradford won't have given up on getting there yet. They're on 26 and 25. Halifax now can't make the playoffs, but are safe in eighth. Swinter are eight points clear of relegation with eight points to play for. Batley have 15 points. Dewsbury 14 and Widnes 12. Barrow are on nine in first relegation place and three points behind Widnes and Rochdale are already relegated. Um, into League One, where it was round 18. Um, close one on the R League at this one. Scholars 14, Oldham 15. Wow, and Carsten gets sent as a, a review in. Very good first half from Oldham, but a second half full of mistakes by both teams. They dropped more balls and I've had bad jokes. All the mistakes made it a close game in the end, though, but someone in the Scholars' sign didn't watch the clock as they made no real effort to level the game in the last set. West Wales 6, Newcastle 68. Coventry 20, Keefley 46. And not surprisingly, we had a view from Mr. Tim G Radio on this one. Another tough day, another so close but so far. As well as the missing first choice front row for the Bears, the back row joined in this week. Keatley were effective but not spectacular. Elliot Hall and Sam Davis were the pick for the Bears. The next month looks really tough as two more players pick up injuries this week. Talk in the coach's room after was me having to come out of retirement for next week. Well, they must be bloody desperate. (laughs) <laughs> all he's going to do is get himself sent off fighting with a ref but that Elliot Hall that full back he's he's a good talent I think championship clubs are going to start looking at him um, he's had a good season Hunslet 42 North Wales 18 Whitehaven 12 Workington 12 a good crowd as well 2,400 on to watch the uh, Cumbrian derby so that's positive that's a good news story all round I think and a great game for them to watch I think it's called the Jam Butty Derby that, but that's got a that's got a, uh, that's a story for another day. Haven hold a three point lead at the top with 26 points from 17 played. Newcastle are the closest chases on 23 from 16, with Oldham on third on 22 from 16. Hunslet on 20, Doncaster on 18, and Workington on 17 make up the playoff spots. Scholars on 15 are still hoping for a playoff place. North Wales on 12 points need a lot to go their way, but tech technically aren't out of it quite yet Coventry, Keatley and West Wales make up the also runs 
uh, into the Women's Super League, Leeds versus York. That match was abandoned just before half time yeah. with Leeds winning 30 0. And our best wishes go out to Sophie Robinson, who picked up a serious leg injury in this game, which, which led to the game being um, abandoned. But she got took, taken to hospital. She's been operated on today. She's recovering well. So, all the best to Sophie uh, Robinson there. Castleford 50, Bradford 16. And we had Fat Boy Rob sent us a comment. I didn't go as some plant scheduled it on the same afternoon as the men's game. Shite. Featherston 18, Wigan 16. Really good win for Featherston there against the reigning champions. And St. Helens 60, Wakefield nil. So Saints go marching on in the Women's Super League as well. Into the NRL where it was round 20. West Tigers 28, Cowboys 4. Warriors 12, Raiders 46. And our Brit boys were in good form here. Josh Hodgson with a try. Nine tackle bus and 119 (coughs) metres. Bateman three offloads. Six tackle bus, 144 metres. And Elliot White played a part two in that win. Broncos 4, Storm 40. C Eagles 30 Knights 6 Bulldogs 16 Panthers 8 Sharks 39 Rabbitohs 24 Tom and Sam both played in this game but did not do much to help the Rabbitohs cause Uh, Roosters 58 Titans 16 Callum Watkins played for the Titans in this one he's going to hope to uh, have better times ahead with Justin Holbrook in charge (laughs) I think Um, couldn't be worse for the Dragons, it was for a loss against the Eels. So it was four points to the Dragons, 12 points to the Eels. But James Graham had a double trouble game of 41 tackles and 108 metres. And Gareth Widdett played again. Um, I'm sure that the Wire would like to bring him over early. I'm not mm. sure they're going to pull that off. What do you think? Well, I don't know. There's some rumours about it this morning, aren't there? I mean, Wire were looking for a half-back anyway because Brown's out for the rest of the season. And obviously now with Austin out as well, they're looking a little bit short in... <clears throat> that area, although we don't know how long Austin's going to be out. In all the uh, other discipline, be, we didn't talk did about it. Austin's injury. I mean, no, it looked a bad one on his ankle, lower leg sort of injury. And I mean, you must have been rubbing your hands at that with a cup <laughs> final. I never do. Three no, weeks no, away. No, no, I'm, I'm a much more mature man than that nowadays. I don't want to see anybody injured uh, ahead of a ahead of a big game. You really want to play teams when they're when they're at the best we don't want any excuses and and to be honest the two games we've played against Warrington this year Austin's done bugger all quite honestly so I'm not I'm not I wasn't that concerned about Austin in in any case uh playing against us and I certainly don't want to see anybody injured but Widdup I think is a really good player and if Warrington can get him over early that'll be that'll be uh great for them and great for Super League Uh, indeed okay what about the standings so the Storm stipped, sit top on 34 points, six clear of a group of three on 28, made up of the Roosters, Raiders and the Rabbitohs. The Sea Eagles are just two points outside the top four on 26, with the Eels on 24. Sharks, Tigers and Panthers all have 20, Broncos have 19, the Knights have 18, Warriors 17, the Cowboys 16, and the Dragons and Bulldogs have 14. The Titans are cut adrift on 10 points. We did have a fan viewing on another game this week as well from the community competition. It was Featherston Lions versus Stanningley which in the National Conference League, which finished 22-18 to Stanningley. Carsten got in touch on this one. He said, great game by both teams with the match winning try just three minutes before the hooter. Goal kicking could have been better and a biting allegation were the negatives, but there was a good crowd and some skills on display. Um, mm. Yeah good stuff there right that is all the results from around the world of rugby league along with your fan views on those results covered we're now going to make our predictions for round 25 of super league Round 25 then of Super League and it kicks off on Thursday night. Um, a pre-planned in Thursday night game at this stage of the season is a rarity, but we know we knew it was going to be for a while. It's 7:45 p.m. kickoff on Sky for Warrington versus St Helens, the top two at the moment, but it might not stay that way very long. Um, <laughs> I struggle with this one. Wire have got away with it after last week, I think, with those bands. They've, they've, mm. they've dodged a bullet a bit, I think. Um, they have and Saints we know are carrying some injuries um, I still think Saints are going to be good enough because they've been good enough all year it's hard to pick against them but I think it's going to be close I'm going to go Saints by four what do you say? I'm going for Saints with that because I couldn't do any other could I? I'm going for Saints with the golden point win 23-22 Mark that's my, that's my prediction Who's kicking uh, the golden point? 
Uh, for Saints, Danny Richardson. Okay, excellent stuff. Um, Friday, 7.45. 